Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 NHL season preview here on WTVU Sports. I'm Brady Gardner with our panel of incredible NHL experts, Patrick Donnelly, Joe Polarillis, and Chad Jones. Fellas, welcome. I think this is going to be great. Yeah, I'm happy to finally get some hockey back tonight. It feel like, feels like it's been forever, even though it's really only been, I guess it's been the normal offseason, like, you know, three months. But just such a strange, like such strange circumstances. Just happy it's finally back. Well, it feels longer because the NBA started up before the NHL, even though they ended two weeks, you know, after them. So, like that, I think that's why, like, we subconsciously think it's been longer for us. Oh, yeah, the the NBA was definitely that break felt like nothing compared. Yeah, to this has been. Yeah, and plus it felt like we were kind of in limbo with the NHL, where like the NBA got going, and then the NHL was like, "Crap, we don't have a plan." And we almost had labor issues, which, but glad it's sorted out and that we're getting going tonight. That's right. Here we are uh, opening night, pretty much January 13th. Um, and this podcast will be coming out sometime either today or tomorrow, I guess. So everybody will be able to see this leading up into the season and get all, get all of our thoughts here. I think this is a, you know, a pretty impressive panel that we, we have come up with here. I feel like the odd man out. So I'm going to be doing most of the facilitating here. I'll let you people kind of, you know, do your thing talking about the hockey. So, Let's get started here. We're going to go division by division. And don't forget, new look divisions this year in order to uh, limit travel, keep everybody fairly uh, localized. And so teams only playing within their kind of region. Uh, not really, you know, we won't see any of these East Coast, West Coast trips that usually happen. Uh, it'll just be all pretty much, you know, within a, a reasonable flight to try to keep teams from spreading things uh, across the country, across the league. So let's start a little bit more locally, at least for us in the East Division. I'll just give you guys the floor. General comments on the East. This is a, uh, it's an intriguing division. Cause you know, there's like most, like pretty much every division um, there's a ton of parity and, you know, some of the teams that were originally picked to be favorites a la Boston um, now has way more question marks than they did. And they already had a lot of question marks. And so it feels like, you know, there's kind of those clear cut four or five teams that are going to be, vying for a playoff spot then you know you have like buffalo who's really balanced but like even then they're still the odd man out so it's it's going to be this is one of the more intriguing divisions i think yeah especially with like what's happened this offseason with two of the top teams that have been there consistently for a while washington after two one and duns fired their head coach they're going into a new transition now losing Braden holpe signings of dano char which i'll get to a little bit in a second on that as well and then also with um the bruins because as, as Pat, as the, as the two Bruins people here along with Brady, I think there's a better chance that the Bruins miss the playoffs than get the first seed in this division. Oh, I, I do not like what they did for this offseason. I do not like how this organization is trending. I, I wrote about it before the offseason really got going, was losing Zidane Chara and Tori Krug in the same offseason would be a disaster. And that's exactly what happened. Now they're rolling with a bunch of young defensemen. I don't know exactly who's exactly going to be starting, who's going to be the – even, you know, pairing with Carlo, they're talking about doing that with Grizzlick. I thought it was going to be with McAvoy. So now they're going to have someone skating with McAvoy. That's probably not going to be ready to be a first pairing defenseman. And I don't, I don't like how the Bruins forwards depth really is now this year either. They've been trying to add the second line right wing forever. And again, they miss out on Hall. They miss out on other options to get that. So I, I think the Bruins are going to take a step back this, this year. And I'm all in on the Flyers. I had them as like a sneaky finals pick last year. If I was on, the, if we did this show last year, I would have said, for a betting wise, I would have picked Flyers Stars for a Stanley Cup final. I was pretty close to getting that. There were good odds. I love the Flyers getting there. They have great, great depth. I like how they play with an enthusiasm and intensity, and their goaltending is as good as it's been in about four decades for that organization. So I, I'm all in on the Flyers. I like them getting the uh, first seed in this division. Yeah, you guys both said it. Just uh, I feel like this division has probably the most. Uh, variety in terms of which teams could come out on top because you guys mentioned you know the Caps and Bruins are a little bit questionable coming in this year uh, I also like the Flyers I picked them to win the division this uh, season but you know Pittsburgh they've got Crosby and, and uh, Malkin which I mean the rest of their roster isn't looking too great compared to recent years but as long as you have those two guys they're still gonna make a push somehow Rutherford's obviously an aggressive GM you can expect him to make some moves so I'm not counting them out entirely, but I also have them a little bit lower than they would be otherwise. And, you know, people just seem to underrate the Islanders uh, every single year. They, they made it all the way to the conference finals last year. They 
they lost Devon Taves, which is probably their biggest, uh, you know, their biggest loss of the off season. They didn't really pick up anybody else, but otherwise most of their roster is still intact. So they could still, I could easily see them, you know, challenging for the top of the division. And if not second or third. Yeah. yeah. And I agree with those points on Philly, you know, Philly's just so deep, you know, the right side, you go Joel Farabee, Jake Voracek, Travis Konechny. Down the middle, you have Sean Couturier, Claude Giroux, uh, and Nolan Patrick if he's healthy. And then it's just a murderer's row there on defense. Like Ivan Provorov could win the Norris Trophy. Carter Hart's all of a sudden the Vesna favorite or one of the Vesna favorites. Like Philly's just so deep where last year in the, in the bubble, they played to their capabilities for the first time in a long time. And if they can continue that, they're definitely, I think, far and away one of the like, arguably the best team in this division. So I'd I'd pick them to win too. And yeah, they Chad, were super helped out by the by the bubble. I thought Philadelphia got like the best yeah. call with being rested and then getting like a reshot at getting a higher seed in the division. So yeah, um, and like Chad, what you're saying with Boston, like we, I've said this a lot to Brady and Ethan. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what this team is. I don't think they're a real contender. I think the fact that they're still favorites to win this division, at least betting wise and like top five team betting odds for the cup. I, I don't believe that at all. I mean, I, it's funny because I, I, like, I love the Craig Smith signing. And I think like if things go well with Andre Kasha, you finally have that forward depth you've been looking for. But then you lose Krug and Char and all of a sudden your back ends in a retool phase. And you don't know as much as I love to harass, you don't know for sure how he'll fare this season, just with the wonkiness of it all and coming out of leaving the bubble last year. Um, yeah, so, I think he's going to take a step back. I think Rask is going to take a step back, and it's really not even going to be his fault. He's yeah. going to, well, who's going to be the oldest defenseman? That's I think hopefully it's not John Moore. Is the is the most tenured like defenseman in front of him? It's going to be like Brandon Carlo, Kevin Brandon. Miller, John oh, Miller, Kevin oh, Moore. Okay. Kev, yeah, Kev, if Kevin Miller plays, and then ho- hopefully John Moore doesn't play. Kevin Miller's fine. Okay, Kevin Miller plays, it's fine. But like, they paid him a million and a half, and they didn't want to pay Chara eight hundred k. I I just don't understand what the Bruins are doing right now. Yeah, and like, I guess it's, you know, Cam Neely said at the beginning of the offseason, you know, we got to take a hard look at where we are. And maybe that is the hard look. Now they're like, hey, we'll try to contend, but we won't really contend. I, and I don't know. It's frustrating because you're too good to, to suck and you're too bad to win. Yeah, I mean, um, at this point, like, it would have been fine if they traded away, like, Krejci and Rask, honestly, because now they're probably just going to let them walk and they're going to get nothing. Like, I, yeah. I just think like, the Bruins are just a middling team this year. I, I kind of think the same way about Pittsburgh, too. Yeah, Pit- okay, Pittsburgh was screwed by the fact this wasn't a normal offseason. Talk about retooling. They needed to completely retool the roster and find, like, some holes to get rid of, and they were, weren't really able to do any of that because of the salary cap hell that literally every owner is impl- implementing the, on their team this year because they can't make enough money with the, uh, like, the lack of revenue. Like, yeah, Pittsburgh like, really needed a regular offseason. And obviously, like, M- Crosby and Malkin are going to be great no question marks there. Like, then you have Chris Letang and his never-ending saga with trying to be healthy – um, Tristan Jari stole the job from Matt Murray this year, but now he's the guy. Can he do that? Can Casey DeSmith be a viable backup? And for like a, for a team as talented as Pittsburgh, you know, if they ever let off the gas and try to coast, they're cooked. Like every single season we see it. Like they ever, if, if they're not 110%, they're toast. And like, as far as effort goes, which is just, it's concerning for a team that's as talented as they are. Um, and I mean, Washington to a lesser extent is sort of like Boston where like, there's just like, I hesitate calling them a legit contender, but you never want to count them out. Yeah. Like, I, I wonder if they lost their, like their window as well to be like legitimately competing for championships, you know? It's interesting. You know, the way I look at the, uh, the East here is just, it seems like there's a little bit of a changing of the guard going on. Uh, and especially within teams too, whether it's, you know, Zidane Char leaving the Bruins to go to the Capitals, Henrik Lundqvist no longer with the Rangers um oh there was another one uh oh Holtby leaving the Capitals as well like there's a lot of big names that have moved around here uh within this kind of East division so it's really hard to predict how it's all going to shake out but I'd like you guys to do that I'm going to ask you for uh your favorite to win this uh East division and then also a team with an outside shot you know maybe they're not the number one choice there but you could see them making a little bit of a run too so already I said I think Philly's gonna win just the depth there is crazy. Um, they're so deep on defense. Samuel Moran has to play forward. It's it's insane. Um, and outside ch- outside chance Rangers. I think the they were the arguably the most exciting team in the league to watch last year. I'd say them and the Canucks. 
or probably the top two as far as entertainment value goes. Um, and, you know, that, that left side on forward, you know, Chris Kreider, Artemi Panarin, Alexi Lafreniere, you hope Kako Kako is going to be better. Uh, Mika Zibanejad, I think, is a budding franchise centerman. And really the only question marks are the defense. And even then, it's it's still a solid group. And then you have uh, Igor Ilya Shosturkin or Igor Shosturkin. One Igor, of, yeah. All the, all the I, Russians I have the I names. So. <laughs> you know, there's like – there was three spellings of that guy's name on Google. So, like, no one yeah. knows how to spell that poor guy's name. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he, like the anglicized is like Shosturkin, but then there's like the yeah. Russian Shosturkin or whatever. But Yeah, just call him Igor. Yeah, it's like they're like he's he's legit, and I don't want to like dump a bunch of pressure on him. Not that he's gonna see this or anything, but like, <laughs> like I think if if he can do what he did in the bubble in the end of the regular season last year when he called when he got called up, and that group continues to play like it did last year, oh man, they're gonna be so fun to watch. Um, I'm going with the Flyers. Like I said, I think they're gonna only take a step forward this year. Carter Hart's gonna be even better than he was last year. Love their forward and defenseman depth. And uh, outside shot, I mean, it's not too outside, I would say, but since Pat stole the Rangers, I would say the other team from here, the Islanders, I mean, like their their defense is just incredibly nasty. They gave it all to light, the Lightning last year. Like they were competitive as I thought that series was going to be, honestly. And now that they hopefully they get the whole thing settled with Barzell because there was an issue with his contract over the summer. Like hopefully like he doesn't carry that over and get off to a slow start being uh, annoyed with how the organization treated like their number one and pretty much their only incredible threat to score offensively. But I like the Islanders. And um, if, if Flyers don't come away with the one seed, then I think they're in New York for it. Yeah, I think I already mentioned that I had the Flyers as well. And you guys you guys have said enough about them. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is exactly an outside shot, but I'm just going to go with the homer pick and say the caps for, for myself. Uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously it's not guaranteed. Their, their window is closing if it's not closed already, but I still like uh, the top six forwards. They all stay the same uh, from last season. They're getting older, but still they've proven that they can perform at a top level. Uh, they added Connor Sheary and uh, Daniel Sprong to the third line. So they've some question marks, but they should add some scoring depth if they play up to their uh, potential, which is a big need for the Caps. They sort of lack that bottom six scoring. And uh, the defensive depth, I think, has gotten a lot better, too. They've got eight defensemen on the roster that can really play every night unless you, you know, discount Chara just, just because of his age, just because he's that old. He's not going to be playing back-to-backs, I don't think, at this point. But, uh, you know, obviously, goalie is the biggest question mark. You're supposed to have uh, Lundqvist uh, sharing time with Samsonov, and now Samsonov is going to be the number one guy, have to shoulder it all on his own, but – you know, if, they, if things come together, I think they can definitely win this division, but there's still a ton of question marks there. And the only other team that we didn't really go into, just one thing on the Sabres, Brady, like, I don't really understand what they're doing. Like, I was, I thought that was the most bizarre contract signing of the last recent years for the NHL. Taylor Hall signing a one-year deal with Buffalo. Like, that doesn't help Buffalo really get over the hump. They're still going to miss the playoffs, probably. He's going to put up sick numbers with Eichel, but sure, a lot of guys could do that. And they're probably just going to trade him again at the deadline anyway. Like, I don't understand why the Sabres did that or Eichel really did that. It doesn't help him win. He didn't cash in. He only got, like, a regular contract for a year. So, I don't really know what the Sabres are doing either. Like, at least they're not the Bruins, I guess, you know. Yeah, Buffalo and New Jersey are kind of in tough spots because, like, New Jersey's obviously not – probably contending for the playoffs but you know they're you expect them to be better last than than they were last year but all reality they're still gunning for the lottery and buffalo is just tough because of the division they're in because they did i think they improved i think taylor hall really makes them a, a, a deeper team at least up front takes a lot of the pressure off eichel and maybe jeff skinner can kind of get things back on track and you hope victor olofsson takes a step and you expect rasmus dalin to take that step that a franchise defenseman should take um but Again, circumstances around them in the division, they don't stand much of a chance, which is unfortunate. And you don't, you just don't trust Buffalo. Yeah. However, I will throw in Buffalo as my outside chance, not really because I think that they can win this division, but because I think they could be really entertaining. And if it all, you know, somehow works out, I think uh, maybe they'll do better than people expect. It is kind of a mess. You know, you have the stars in Eichel and Hall. You have some better leadership now, I guess, in Eric Stahl. But then it's like, what else is there anywhere? Uh, regardless, I think it's going to be fun to watch. There's going to be a lot of high-scoring games there. 
Um, well, Brady, did you fall into the hype the last few years with, with uh, oh, this is Buffalo's year. This is Buffalo's it. year. Oh, so you always, okay. So you're just drinking the Kool-Aid I'm not again. falling for the hype and saying they're going to be great. I just think that it's okay. going to be really fun to watch, whether it goes okay. well or it goes badly. And then my Fair favorite, enough. I think, to win it, I'm going to go with the Bruins. They're still, you know, the best team and, and a favorite to me without uh or you know until proven otherwise right i think philly is up and coming obviously and, and they'll probably be uh you know around the top for years to come uh, but for now i think the bruins have changed a lot but they haven't changed enough for me to take them out of that one spot just yet i could be Rask has got to be great for you brady rask well, has got to be too, fantastic you know maybe a Fair little much. bit biased there regardless let's move along here folks into the west division uh where i see uh, some real you know favorites and some you know, top of the top and then also the bottom of the bottom. So uh big range here in the West, it seems. Oh, man. I love Colorado. Like Brady knows just from living me, living with me how high I am on the Colorado Avalanche. Um, so, like, I mean, you add Brandon Saad, you know, Connor Timmons, a young defenseman, is, like, finally healthy. And so you're adding him to a group that has Kale McCarr. Bowen Byron's going to play. So like, and you have Sam Gerrard. So you have those four elite young defensemen there. Makar, who's vying for a Norris after he won the call there last year. And just like Ryan Graves came out of nowhere last year. He looks like he's a fine shutdown defenseman. And obviously the top line there, Landis Gog, McKinnon, Ranton, and needs no, like no introduction. And down, like you got, you have the depth too. You know, JT Comper is a fine third line center. Um, and really the only question mark comes is, and I also didn't imagine as mentioned Nazem Kadri, who was on unreal for them last year. He's totally turned it around. Yeah. <laughs> like, find, like just, he stepped into a leadership role immediately and find, like found that maturity with his game. And really the only question mark is in goal. I, I, I like Philip Grubauer and Pavel Francouz who kind of came out of nowhere last year, but you just wonder if that's a group you can kind of, if that, if Grubauer is a guy you can lean on to win a cup, and again, I guess no one's proven until they win one, but um, that's the only thing that takes me back with this team. But other than that, I love Colorado. And like, like I mean, like you said, Brady, um, like Anaheim, LA, San Jose, like San Jose is the biggest wild card here, I think. Um, but like, there's a lot of, a lot of middle of the ground teams with Arizona, St. Louis, and like in Anaheim. And then you have like San Jose is a wild card. LA is probably still going to be lower, even though they'll, pro- they'll be improved. In Vegas, I think, is the one challenge in Colorado the most here. Yeah, I love Colorado. Maybe not quite as much as you, Pat, but I love Colorado. What they did to Arizona last year in the bubble, like, honestly, it shouldn't have been – like, kids should not have been watching that because that was just inappropriate. And um, their lines are just absolutely nasty. If I could think of one guy in the NHL that I that I am super confident is going to get a Stanley Cup ring in the next five years, I think it's Nathan McKinnon. Not only because his talent is absolutely absurd up there with McDavid, but his team is stacked and is – and his organization has been able to find like these players to draft and right away produce like Kale McCarr is absolutely nasty. It's incredible. That they were able to put him right in the system and just produce insane amount of points right away. Love, love, love Colorado. And the other team that is really going to think vibe for them is Vegas. I love, they got Petrangelo this off season, you know, as much as they had to dump Nate Schmidt for nothing. Like I thought he was a really good part of their team as well, but Petrangelo is going to be a legit number one uh, defenseman for them. Che Theodore has taken an incredible amount of steps in Vegas because, like, I, I saw, like, a decent amount of his games with the Ducks, or at least some amount, and, like, he never did anything like this with Anaheim. So to see what he's done is becoming an offensive defenseman is is uh, wild. And Vegas is great forward depth, too. I mean, they might have the best forward depth in the NHL, not necessarily skill-wise, but, if, like, when you watch them play, you, sometimes you can't even tell which uh, line is on the ice. Like, they're always putting good pressure in the offensive zone. They're always smart defensively, and they all play um, a solid – 60 minutes and a, a solid 200 foot game. So I do like Vegas if uh, Colorado stumbles at all with like uh, defensive situations or if their goalie falls off. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I think this division's between Colorado and Vegas. Uh, the fact that Colorado is such a strong team that they do now, and they also have one of the best uh, prospect pipelines in the entire league at this point, just in all the depth they have just within the organization itself just shows that they're going to be competing for years to come, the foreseeable future. Uh, and Pat, I agree with you. I think Grubauer, he's a solid choice in net. Maybe not exactly the Stanley Cup caliber, but, you know, with the surrounding team, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to get them there. I think they've got every uh, opportunity to make that jump this year. Yeah, I agree with Grubauer. I think he's capable, um, and which, which is fine when you have a st- that stacked of a team. But, you know, like Joe Sackick is such a gunslinger 
where it wouldn't shock me at all if they went out and got somebody say like it's in the within the division but say flurry all of a sudden becomes available again or freddie anderson in toronto too like, rask oh <laughs> hey if things are going bad for the bruins and rask, i mean yes sir I, I mean, yeah no? rask will retire if they ask him to wave his no trade clause good um to a cup contender but, get his first ring i don't know just thought just a thought i'll, I'll be quiet again <laughs> but yeah i mean like you like St. Louis, you need Jordan Bennington to pick it back up. Uh, you've signed Mike Hoffman. You hope he does more to help you than hurt you, as much as numbers might say otherwise. Um, you know, San, like San Jose just needs Eric Carlson to be healthy. Um, Arizona's interesting because they said they were going to cut payroll and then didn't. Um, so they, they kind of strike me as one of those middle of the ground teams. But, they, you know, like we sat here at this time last year calling Darcy Kemper a Vesna favorite before he got hurt. Um, and then, like, Anaheim's interesting again. You know, you get the wrong, young players. Zegers is drawing a lot of the headlines, but I don't know how much he'll actually play this year. Um, I kind of peg him, like, to start in the AHL at least because of how they. it seems like their roster's already set. Um, and, you know, Minnesota's, again, that middle team, too good to suck, too bad to win. And L.A. is kind of in the in the same spot as, as Anaheim, you know, exciting young players, but how, how much improvement are they actually going to make? It's just a rough spot for the three California teams. I mean, like as the California representation here, growing up, like at least one of the probably two of the three teams were like always good, and now they all suck all at once. I mean, it's 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 pretty incredible like what's like, happened to the three California teams. Like the good thing for San Jose is like they have the least amount of pressure on them in like what fifteen years. Um, yeah, that so, thorn has gone. It's 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 they don't have like the same like pressure to. Actually yeah, there, there's no pressure, but like the talents there between Couture, Hurdle. Um, it depends on how much Patrick Marlowe has left in the tank if Evander Kane plays. Um, but you know, like there's Timo Meyer, and on defense, you know, you hope Vlasic stops falling off a cliff at some point. Um, but the talent's there, and if Martin Jones can figure it out or Devin Dubnik kind of has a resurgence, you know, they could, I think they could easily vie for a playoff spot. And I do like the trade for Dubnik because I think Jones is a better backup than a starter. He's just way too yeah. inconsistent. He gives up too many bad goals. Dubnik's a much more uh, stable place to. I think those are guys that will like thrive in a tandem situation yeah all right fellas your favorite and uh and a long shot that you think could make a run i mean do i need to really say my favorites colorado i think it's quite obvious um and my my uh long shot to make a run here god i want arizona to be good so badly so i'll pick them um just I was rooting for him last year. You know, the Kachinas are awesome. Darcy Kemper is awesome. Uh, you hope Clayton Keller, shout out BU, he's going to take like that step that they've been waiting for him to do that. Love OEL. So, I mean, like they have some top pieces there, just not enough around them. But hey, maybe they can, you know, win a ton of 2 1 1 nothing games that they've been doing under Rick Tockett. So I guess I'll pick them. I mean, yeah, I'll go with Colorado first. I like Vegas as a solid option too, but if I could pick one other team to maybe like kind of surprise people, I do think the Blues have a decent chance to compete this year. I mean, they just got kind of embarrassed and like just caught not really prepared for what Vancouver was going to bring offensively and also defensively. They weren't really ready at all for that. I do, I obviously, Pat, you know how much I love Corey Krug. The signing of Krug makes them so much better offensively from a team that really relied so much on like a heavy hitting game and five on five play. Krug brings an element to the power play that they haven't really had for, I mean, Geez, for years, probably since like Chris Pronger, obviously they haven't had a guy that be able to produce as many points consistently as Krug, especially from the left side. But, you know, it, it, it's a question about Bennington. Can he ever get back to maybe not like game seven Stanley Cup final, but at least like a pretty good goaltender. I don't know if they've lost him forever because, you know, he might have gotten a bad case of the yips. But if Bennington can come back, the Blues, I think, can definitely compete for a wild card spot. And even the division. Yeah, I'm a, I'm pretty much in agreement with you, Chad. I have uh, the Colorado uh, – I have Colorado winning the division. Vegas is a, you know, solid second choice. And then I, I think the Blues uh, are a long shot here just uh, because given the other teams, you know, they're, about half the division is struggling right now or at least, you know, not quite uh, ready to make that jump into the playoffs yet. But uh, I really think pretty much for everything you said, uh, Ryan O'Reilly taking, out, taking over sort of as the – franchise face now that petrangelo has gone but they still got tory krug in the mix now uh i really like uh, what they have to offer and you know if bennington can figure things out then they're going to be right in the mix with everyone else 
All righty. Uh, for me, favorite has to be the Avalanche, of course. Uh, you know, Patrick pumps their tires so much that I just, uh, I, you know, believe in it now too. And uh, and I'm going to say I think the Sharks could be a surprise here. You know, goaltending has been a big issue. Maybe Dubin will, fills that gap like you guys have said. Uh, and they still have that top talent. Maybe, you know, getting rid of Joe Thornton actually ends up being a plus for them. Who knows? So uh, I'll say the Sharks. Um, and let's move along now to the Central Division, which uh, includes – the two uh, Stanley Cup finalists of the past season, as well as some other teams that could be in line to make a, a little bit of a jump this year. I think this is a pretty interesting division, guys. Yeah, I think this reminds me of the East a lot, where you know there are some top teams here. There's not many middle-of-the-ground teams, and then it really falls off at the bottom with Chicago and Detroit. Um, but other than that, like there's some intriguing teams here. I think Carolina is going to be good again. Again, their question marks only in goal. Like, can Peter Morazic really get it done? Um, Columbus is interesting. You know, there's the whole Pierre-Luc Dubois situation um, and whether Elvis Merzlikens again can, can be that guy like he was last year just out of nowhere. Um, you know, Dallas, they need guys to be healthy. They're going to be without Sagan for a little bit. The, the, basically, the entire team has COVID now, so you wonder how that affects them. Um, you expect Florida be, to be better. How much better? You don't know. Um, Nashville, again, like they've played well below their capabilities the last few years, and you need those guys to step up, especially like in net between Pecorine and um, blanking on his backup name, but uh, the Saros, Saros, yes, Saros, you see Saros, like, like Saros showed flashes last year when Rene was bad, then Saros was bad, and Rene kind of came back, and it was just it wasn't great last year in Nashville, and then Tampa. Tampa's so weird to me. Like, this is probably the, the division that has so many question marks just top to bottom. Tampa's so strange because it feels like they're taking a knee with Kucherov out for the year. And, you know, they can't figure out who to find a partner for Tyler Johnson. They're so strapped for cash. But then the talent's still there. And Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Hedman, McDonough, Vasilevsky. So, I mean, like, they're still going to be vying for a playoff spot in the division in all likelihood. It's just It just feels weird to me. I honestly think they're going to cruise to the division title for this. This division has so many question marks, as you said earlier. Like, they're clearly the best team with it. And um, I honestly don't know how lucky they got with being, like, like who's even I, – I don't even know who the second best team is compared to Carolina, Blue Jackets, Stars. Like, they all have a lot of question marks. I don't think probably any of these teams are going to be as good as they were last year. The Lightning, I think, are going to cruise to the division title for it. And it's a little annoying how they, they have, like, by far the easiest division as far as, like, a top team. Because the Canadian teams are all, like, a little bit closer. There's not one seed that's going to like dominate that division. The East has, you know, five teams that can probably win that division. And then while the West might be a little more top heavy, at least Vegas has uh, Colorado to battle with. Like the Lightning really don't have, I think, a predecessor for this division. And I, I'd be surprised if they don't win this division handily. I'm a, I'm a little bit higher on Carolina uh, than you are maybe Chad. Uh, but I, yeah, I still think it's Tampa's division to lose even without Kucherov, but just looking at Carolina, you know, Sebastian Ajo, Tevo Teravainen, Svechnikov, they're all going to get better. They're going to keep getting better just with their ages. They're all really young. Uh, I think they're really building something nicely in Carolina. And they added a few pieces at the trade deadline that maybe didn't have much time to mesh when you think about the stoppage and then getting back into the bubble. And they struggled a little bit once they were there. But, uh, you know, obviously this wasn't a full off season. This wasn't a normal off season, but uh, – with all these guys they have in camp, the pieces that they added, Dougie Hamilton should be back to full strength now. I think they're going to make some noise, if not completely win the division. I love their offense, but their defense and um, especially their goaltending is just too sketchy. Like they've been exposed in the playoffs in the last couple of years, and I just don't think they can go too far. Maybe in the regular season they could cover up with that, but I, I just don't trust them to win these competitive games on the stretch where they're competing with the Lightning. Yeah, I, I disagree with their with the defense point there, you know, Jacob Slavin was the trendy pick for years about the, the defenseman. No one talks about. They're and great now, offensively. They're a little now sketchy. Now he's finally getting to do about, you know, being one of the best defenders in the league. And like, and then, you know, Hayden Fleury came along last year. Um, Brett Pesci is all of a sudden one of the better shutdown guys. They had Brady, they had Brady Shea, who was a top pair defenseman in New York and they got him for nothing. Um, so I, I really like their top four between like and we even mentioned Hamilton, who was a Norris Trophy candidate last year before he got hurt. I think their biggest issue is in net between Mrazek and Reimer. And I think a lot of people discount their top line with Teravine and Aho and Svechnikov. Yeah, they're like, nasty. Aho might be the most underrated player in the NHL. That's a top that guy. line in the league. That goes it probably goes Boston's line when everyone's or top three, no order. Boston's line when everyone's healthy. Colorado's top line and this top line. 
I think this is gonna. I think they're like this is a great team that's gonna be weighed down by their goaltending. Yeah, I just also Definitely. think like their offense is just so like offensively minded. A lot of times they leave like their goaltenders, which are a little bit below average, you know, in situations sometimes because they're always looking to score. Pat, like they're just such talented offensively. Like a lot of times they get caught. But I do. I I like Carolina's lineup. I just don't think they'll be able to compete with Tampa for the division. Interesting. All righty. Uh, once again, a favorite and a uh, another team that you think could go for it. I'm picking Carolina. I think they're going to outscore their problems on the, in that, you know, I mentioned the big hitters up front with the top line and you also add Ryan Dezingle who can put up 20 Vincent Trocek, who's a fine second line center, Martin Natchez, who broke onto the scene as a rookie last year. He was great for them last year. And, you know, Jordan Stahl is still like, we're just waiting for him to be washed up at some point, but he's still a fine like middle six player. And he's a big, big guy who can kill penalties with the best of them. And, you know, like, whether it's Aho, uh, Warren Fogel played really well last year, Tara Vine and Svechnikov, like the talent's there. Same thing on defense. It's just the murderer's row between like Slavin, Pesci, Hamilton, Flurry, and then you get to the goaltending. But I think they can outscore their problems. I think, obviously, I think Tampa's going to run away with it, or at least by a good amount. But I would, <laughs> if there's one team that could like be under the radar, I'm going to say the Blue Jackets. Because I was super impressed with how they played last year. I thought they were going to suck last year. Losing the starting goaltender, losing Panarin. I thought they were going to be, you know, bottom five of the NHL. And that maniac torts, he gets them to compete. I don't even know how, but they were in it. They were, they had a solid chance of upsetting the Lightning with that crazy, you know, what was that, six, seven overtime game in the first round. I, I like how Blue Jackets compete. And for a short season, you're going to need a lot more tenacity than maybe you would in a regular season with 82. And I think they're going to outscore their outgrind their opponents on the, these back-to-back games, you know, three games in five days. I'd like Columbus's compete level. So outside shot for Columbus. Yeah. I, I sort of tip my hand a little bit, but I'm, I'm keeping Tampa as the favorite, even without Kucherov for the regular season. I think uh, they still got the depth and the talent to get it done. And uh, I, I also really like Carolina. I I'm interested to see how Trocek does now that he's entering uh, Carolina as the, you know, beginning the season with them and starting as their third center. Uh, I think if he is that, you know, strong three C for them, that'll really take them above and beyond with their, with their depth. All right. I'm going to go down a different path. I'm going to say that the stars are going to win this one. Uh, I think, you know, they've done a good job of holding on to pretty much all their pieces from last year's cup final run. Uh, and, uh, you know, they did lose Tyler Sagan for a little bit here with his injuries as till April, definitely not ideal. Uh, But I think, you know, the rest of the team will be as good as ever and they should be hungry. Well, maybe the Lightning have a little bit of a cup hangover. Uh, We'll have to wait and see on that one. And then a team that I think could and also might, I hope, I guess, that they make a run would be the Florida Panthers. Again, they've added some more offensive talent in addition to this kind of sneaky good players that they've already had down there. Um, And plus, you hope that Bobrovsky can find his form again. So I'm going to say the Panthers might quietly have a good year. Pat, why didn't the Bruins trade for Keith Yandel? They've been linked to him forever. Good yeah. Boston guy. You could replace Kruger on the power play, and they didn't. They don't do anything. Come on, they didn't, I, I they didn't like give you one con- thing. I don't like that contract for Yandel. You know, you get three years left, six point three five for a thirty-four year old. Uh, I don't know. Have him eat some of it. The Panthers are desperate to cut cap. But you know that type of contract is hard to move in the beginning, to like to begin with, just because of his age. And then you add in the fact that the league economics, the way they are with the flat cap and nobody's willing to take on money. You saw Arizona tried to cut money. Nobody took them. No one's, no one wants Tyler Johnson. They won't even do Tampa the favor of taking him. This off season just sucked. This off season sucked for that. Yeah. And like, like how, how eager is Florida to eat eat money for a guy who won't play for them with the economics, the way they are. Um, And I I didn't bring a a outside outside shot here. I'm going to go with Dallas. Like Brady had to win. Um, I think if they can kind of weather the storm without Sagan, um, and, you know, Jamie Ben can kind of return to form because he wasn't great last year in the regular season. Um, Dennis Gurionov, I think, is sneaky. is one of the most exciting players to watch in the league. Um, his shot is like a la Austin Matthews, where it just looks effortless. And it's just crazy to me that the type of shots and one-timers he can get off. Um, and then, like, like, you know, Ben Bishop, you expect him to be healthy again. Um, and you have two Norris, like I call, I call a lot of people Norris Trophy candidates, but I love John Klingberg and Miro Haskinen. I think Miro Haskinen is going to be like a top five defenseman in this league for like the next 10 years. Um, Andrew so, Dobin's a great backup. Yeah. Andrew Dobin might be the best backup in the NHL right now. Yeah. You have, you have the pieces there. It's just, if you can weather the storm without Tyler Sagan and that maybe that pressure falls on a young guy like group a hints to kind of step up here, but I think they got some good pieces. They should make the wild card. I'd be surprised if they miss out of the playoffs. Yeah. 
All right, the final division we have to go to is the North, and I saved probably the best for last. It's all Canada and all excitement. There are going to be some great matchups here really throughout the season uh, and, and a lot of great teams here that I'm sure you guys are excited to watch, see how this entire division unfolds. I think this is going to be like the most competitive, the most exciting division to watch. You know, like you had six of the seven teams here were technically playoff teams in Ottawa. Like Ottawa is not going to be a playoff team again, but they're not going to be a pushover. Like they made they made good improvements and probably no better than Tim Stutzla. But like they're, I think Ottawa is going to be like, okay, but still like they don't stand a chance. And that all got significantly better between like Tyler Toffoli, um, Josh Anderson, if he's healthy. Calgary is basically the new Vancouver Canucks with Tanev, Markstrom, and Lebo. But, you know, Tanev kind of brings some more stability and veteran presence to that blue line that kind of needed more depth. You know, Markstrom can, I think, make a good tandem with Dave Riddick, who I don't know. I don't think he's a – I think he's a fine 1A if you want to do a strong tandem. I don't think he can be the guy. So I think bringing in Markstrom is huge. You hope Goudreau kind of finds it again. I think Sean Monaghan is super underrated. Um, I think as, they you can see, as you can see over your right shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I, I mean, this didn't mean to be a whole diatribe on Calgary, but Calgary's like looking pretty good. Edmonton without Oscar Clefbaum, it's going to be a little difficult for them. But you know, you can't count out Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle. Toronto, you expect again? Can they win a playoff round? Vancouver's interesting. Like they were so good and exciting last year, but it feels like they kind of took a slight step back here. And Winnipeg's just Winnipeg's crazy to me. Like. They have all that forward talent and then on defense last year without Dustin Bufflin, they kind of got shredded and played a lot of guys played above their potential and Connor Hellebuck but kind of had to be like the saving grace for them all the time. So they're, they're super interesting to me in Winnipeg. Yeah. Pat, similar. Like I would be able to talk myself into pretty much any of these teams making the playoffs, except the senators like Calgary has, has a sick offensive unit, both from the back end and the forwards. Obviously the Oilers have McDavid and dry It's hard to completely shut them down any given night. I mean, the Canadian. I'm impressed with what Canadians have done the last year, honestly, because I did not think they stood a chance against Pittsburgh. They worked them in the playoffs. I love that Nick's. I love that Suzuki guy. It's yeah. awesome to see yeah. Suzuki in the NHL. I mean, that's just a sick name, anyway. Uh, the Canadians finally have some young depth scorers where they actually able to produce. They've been struggling with that for the last three, four years. Um, Maple Leafs are obviously in there. You know, they're still in cap hell with their forwards making you know 20 percent of the cap, but overall they're still a good lineup. All in on the Canucks. I love Quinn Hughes. That guy's a stud. That guy's going to be a new favorite NHL defenseman to watch throughout the next 10 years. And the Jets still have, you know, good offense. I, I don't know. Halibut's probably taking a step back when he was a couple years ago, but he's still a solid net minder. And I'm looking forward to also a couple of the rivalries this year because the Flames have something to do with pretty much like half the league right now in the, in the Canadian team because the Jets are going to be pissed about what uh, Kachuk did or did not do to Schleifle's uh, Achilles last year in the playoffs. Obviously, the Oilers and the Flames are going to be going at it. Hopefully, we get at least one goalie fight this year. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the, watching this division. I would think the Canucks are going to come out on top because the youth takes one more step. But we'll see. Yeah, I also really like the Canucks. Uh, I think Pedersen, he could have an outside shot at the heart if, if Vancouver really plays well. I think he's been progressing every single year. Brock Besser is really nice on the wing. I think their depth isn't, you know, incredible but i think they've got enough star power you, know, you talk about quinn hughes as well they added a uh, nate schmidt over the offseason not a superstar but still a pretty good defenseman and then uh thatcher demko had a great postseason run he's still young but they're they got him in a tandem with holpe who obviously i'm a bit partial to but uh you know pairing a veteran who maybe is trailing off a little bit but still has that experience with uh, a guy with a pretty good upside and demko i think is a great way to pair your goalies and uh I'm, I'm pretty high on them. Mm -hmm. I think this is just crazy. Like looking at all these teams and all, you know, they're going to be playing against just, you know, each other, right. With the way that the schedules are this year, it feels like there are really no easy outs here. You know, maybe the yeah. senators obviously, and they're going to have a tough season because they're against so many playoff caliber teams. Uh, but I, I feel like looking at this division, like there aren't going to be any easy nights here, uh, which could make, you know, whoever comes out of this division really tough to beat in the playoffs. Yeah, to me, it's so hard picking, like, who's going to miss here. Because, like, Vancouver, like, as much as I love Vancouver, I just don't know if I see it with, like, uh, with Braden Holtby in the depth up front and losing Tanev and not not finding a replacement. I guess Nate Schmidt, but, like, not finding a viable replacement on the right side to play with Quinn Hughes. Um, like, so there's just so many, like, it's unfortunate, like, you have to pick, like, like a Vancouver or Winnipeg or Montreal or an Edmonton might might miss the playoffs here. Cause it's just like, it's just a murderer's row in this division. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm going to make you guys guess it. So favorite and a uh, outside chance. This is a t- tough one to pick, but we'll see what we get. Favorite, I'm going to go Toronto as much as it pains me to say that. Um, I think Matthews is going to continue to get better. You know, he's going to be in the Rocket Richard conversation again. You hope Mar- like Marner is probably going to be better considering, A, there won't be – like we know how brutal Toronto fans are. And I like there are a lot of hard feelings after that contract negotiation last summer. So I feel like a lot of that pressure is off him now. Um, I think Morgan Riley's tremendous. And really, your only question mark comes to Freddie Anderson if he can pick it up. But then again, you're not going to be asking Freddie Anderson to play 60 games here because you finally have a viable backup in Jack Campbell. Um, so I, I like Toronto. I think there's just too much firepower for them to like they'll just overpower everybody, it feels like. Um, outside shot, boy. Um, I'm going to go Vancouver again. Like I, I just, I took them down my, like the last thing I said, but they're like, I can't pick against the Canucks. They're so fun to watch. Like Joe already said, Pedersen is just a, is a treat to watch play. Um, you add in Quinn Hughes, Thatcher Demko is kind of stepping up here. They've been waiting on him for a little bit. Um, so I, if, if there's like anybody who like feels like they're on the outside looking in right now that can make a run, it's Vancouver. I'm going with Vancouver to win. I like their their young, I think, and experience will honestly help them during this time. They don't have like a whole lot of veteran guys they're going to have to worry about playing back-to-backs. Most of the people on their team are going to be veterans. Although the one veteran I do I love is Holpe as a backup. Because I don't think – I think the Capitals just kind of let him down, honestly, with their poor defensive play the last couple of years, Joe. And I know the postseason they were giving up like way too many shots. And their, their coach was just not getting it done. So I like him as a backup role. And – um yeah, I think all the young guys, Patterson and Hughes, are going to take even a next step and be even better this year than they were last year. And it, it's a little bit of a weird offseason, obviously, for them. But I think they figured out how to perform the NHL night in and night out. So I like the Canucks. And underrated team, I would say the Canadians. It's weird to kind of say that because I, I still hate that Brendan Gallagher guy. But Carey Price, I think, is going to have a, a really, really good year. He's had the best defense he's had probably since the 14 Canadians this year. Shea Weber's rejuvenated. I mean, he's back to being like, Maybe not Norris, but just below that. And he's, he's incredible. And that trade honestly looks like fine with what they gave up with P.K. Subban to get Weber, where at the time I was all against them doing that. And I like their young forwards. I mean, Suzuki, I think, is really going to transition into a, a legit, like, 25-30 goal scorer for the Canadians. And Gallagher, as much as he annoys me, is a really good leadership in there. And um, I think there'll be a tough out with Price in that. So I like the Canadians as a, as a second option. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm going with Vancouver as uh, my pick to win the division this year. Uh, sort of talked a bit about them. Uh, Maple Leafs, I could easily see winning just because of how you know much uh, talent they have up front and just around their roster. So I, I won't really pick them as an outsider. Uh, just to make it interesting, I'll go with the I'll go with the Jets as the as the outside pick. Uh, I think I really like their forward talent, even though it's can be questionable at times. I think their top six is pretty strong compared to the rest of the division. Uh, defense, their core is a little bit of a question mark, but uh, Helly Buck, uh, as you know, the reigning Vesna Trophy winner, that's definitely going to boost some of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is a really tough one here, uh, and I could be totally wrong with these, but I'm going to say the Canucks to win it. Uh, I think it, it's such a good team. They showed it in the playoffs, and they're only, you know they're young. They're only getting better, I would think, and especially on you know goal. What they just I think Vancouver just lost too much between Tanev, Markstrom, and Toffoli. But they upgraded with Holtby in that. I think that, you know, maybe just remembering Holtby of three years ago, Joe. But <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been trending down a bit. But, you know, I think as a backup, uh, I think he could do well. You know? I th- as as, yeah, I, I think if he's, if he's backup, I kind of peg him for like a, a pretty close to 50 50 split with Demko, unless Demko. So very good. One of the best duos yeah. in the league. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know how better Vancouver got. No, no, that's why you guys are the like experts that. here. Okay. I'm just. <laughs> Kind of guessing with a little bit of heart, kind of the eye test, and I see some great things out of the Canucks. So we'll see what happens there. And then the other team that I think could be quite good would be the Canadians. I think they've had a, a nice little rebuild here. They added a lot of interesting pieces, uh, and they still have Carey Price. People forget that. Still one of the best goalies in the league. So look out for the Canadians this season, uh, and maybe you know they'll, they'll even get on the Bruins level and that rivalry can pick up again because it's been kind of lame in recent years. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Okay, let's move along. End of season here. We're going to wait on our cup picks. We're going to wait for the, the grand finale of the show with that one. But let's look at some individual awards uh, to give it for the people at home. We're going to go through the Hart, which is the MVP, the Calder, Rookie of the Year, the Norris, Best D-Man, and then 
the Vezina, which is for goalies. So uh, we'll start at the top there. Your uh, your most valuable player this season. Who is it? Nathan McKinnon. This dude's a gamer. Like he is every like he's just like a right-handed Sidney Crosby. It's insane. Um, like the power that this guy has, and he can just take over games. Like he's he's a powerful skater and a powerful dude. He will run you over. But he has the finesse too. He has the hands and he has the shot. He's just insane. And you know he had that great rookie year. And then kind of tapered off there, and they gave him like he's on one of the bargain contracts in the league. It's like six by six. It's like it's like Pasternak, I think. Yeah. Um, and like there were some question marks there. His second and third year, we kind of like tapered off a little bit, or at least didn't grab as much of the headlines. And now he's just come back in full force the last few years. So I think it's it's Nathan McKinnon's to lose. All right, as much as I want to say McKinnon, I got to disagree. Then just at least for the show, Jack Eichel. He's going to be playing yeah. now with Taylor Hall. I like the odds. Also, I'm looking at like the odds now to win. Eichel has like a decent amount of odds. So if you're a gambler out there, Jack Eichel with Taylor Hall is not the worst thing to bet on. Now, I don't think Buffalo's going to make the playoffs. So I think it's going to be that rare instance where a guy that misses the playoffs puts up ridiculous numbers, is clearly like the best player in the league, but just doesn't have enough around him to compete for a cup, even to make the playoffs. So Eichel's going to put up sick numbers with Hall. And uh, shout out to the BU Chelmsford guy. I like that. Yeah, I've uh, I got Nathan McKinnon too. Uh, but if we want to make it interesting and just uh, pick someone separate, I'll just throw out uh, Austin Matthews. Just with the talent in there, I think uh, the amount of points he's going to score, I think, is going to take a notch up. Even though he's already been uh, pretty prolific as is, uh, and I, I had Vancouver winning the North Division, but Toronto could easily do that. And I think uh, Matthews is going to be the one to power them there. Yeah. Those are some good picks, fellas. I had McKinnon as well. I feel like often, you know, these MVP type awards uh, go to a player who is on the best team, right? Not, you know, natural there. And if, you know, the Colorado Avalanche are going to be the best team, then he's probably going to be their best player. He'll probably win the Calder. Uh, I like the Eichel pick a lot by Chad, especially with finally a, kind of a, you know, a sidekick next to him in Taylor Hall. Um, and maybe just another guy I'll throw out in there I would be Claude Giroux. If we think that the the, uh, the oh, Flyers are going to make a, a good jump, one, Brady. If we think the Flyers are going to make a jump, he'll probably be at the center of it. So we'll see there. Uh, okay. Best, uh, hmm. Let's go, uh, what, best defenseman next for the Norris? What do we got for that one? This has me pulled in so many different directions because I said Haskin and Makar. Um, Seth Jones doesn't get enough love. Like we, we hyped up Shea Theodore. Charlie McAvoy should take a step. Like there's Victor Hedman who hasn't even been talked about. But I think I'm going to go Miro Haskin and I hyped him up. Um, this he dude, was so nasty in the playoffs. Ooh. He's insane. Just it, it's effortless out there for him. Like just the, the the skating ability, the vision, and like nope, like oh, it, I'm speechless. Like I, no one's a bigger Miro Haskinen fan in the Northeast than me, probably. Um, yeah, look over your right shoulder, man. Like, yeah, I know the, the <laughs> Miro Haskinen jersey. I I don't know. I think he's gonna be. I think he's going to take that next step this year. He had a great rookie year. He had a great sophomore season this year. And I think he's going to finally take the reins there in Dallas. All right. This might be like pre like too premature. It might be a couple of years until he actually becomes in this conversation, but I'm all in on Quinn Hughes. The future is now this guy's a stud. He's got a good offensive unit around him. He's going to be putting up a lot of, a lot of solid tape to tape passes and, uh, Love that guy. He's good. Yeah. I don't know if he'll, I don't like know how exactly confident it'll be that he'll win it this year, but, I'm going to go with him. And uh, if not this year, he's guaranteed to win in the next three years. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to go with Victor Hedman this year. I think uh, without Kucherov, they're going to be looking to sort of make up for that lost production. And I think Hedman is one of the better, you know, two-way defensemen in the entire league. And they're going to be looking towards him to sort of help with that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he just is coming off the uh, call to tr- the uh, playoff MVP uh, after winning the Stanley Cup. And I think that's going to continue forwards with that. Momentum. So you think he's going to put up enough points though? Because the Norris isn't necessarily even like the best defenseman. They just see like the guy that puts up the most points. Normally. Yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, John Carlson, he, he put up a ton of points last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but obviously he isn't the strongest uh, defensive defenseman. Exactly. So I think the, I think, you know, if you put those two things, uh, you know, you got to consider all aspects there. And uh, I think Hedman's going to meet that. Patrick already mentioned Seth Jones and I'm going to say him. Uh, I, I think he finally, he really like blew up, I think in the national scale anyway, with his playoff performance, like that quintuple overtime game. And he had like an hour on the ice, just ridiculous numbers that he was putting up by the end there. I think they're going to rely on him heavily in Columbus and, uh, and hopefully he rises to the occasion. Uh, okay. Vezina, best goaltender. Who is it? 
Cat of Hat. Um, oh, Car- really? I'm going with Carter Hart. Um, the the Flyers, like, you're going to, like, Chad said it, Carter Hart's the best goaltender you've had there in at least 30 years. Um, and this this kid is coming into his own as a superstar. And maybe he doesn't get that love nationally because, like, Philly's not the biggest team. Um, but, like, and that's not to say Philly's not a hockey market, but it's just, like, there's so many other big names out there. But Carter Hart, it's, like, it looks easy for him. And I, like I said this a lot for like Haskin and the other guys, but like different comparison, I guess, but like his, his technical, his like technical skills are so sound and he doesn't like for a, a young guy who stepped into that job into just a dumpster fire of a goaltender situation Philly had that first year when he got mm-hmm. called up, like this dude does not get rattled. The composure he has is un, is surreal. And I just think, you know, last year, how well he played in the bubble, we're kind of seeing him kind of take control as a top five goaltender in this league. Well, speaking of playing the bubble, I'm going with Darcy Kemper. Even though Arizona does have a whole lot of protection there, that. that guy was nasty. He was the only reason why Arizona did not get incredibly swept, giving up like seven goals a game. The only time he would ever get beat was because like there was just no, no help at all in front of him. Well, it's not necessarily like the easiest pick from the writer standpoint, because Arizona could definitely miss the playoffs. And a lot of times they want guys that make the playoffs and are on like solid teams. I, I really like Darcy Kemper's game and hopefully they recognize like if he was in a situation with a much better team around him, he'd be putting up, you know, even better points. So hopefully Kemper, they put that in consideration. Kemper was my favorite last year before he got hurt. And then you can't really pick a guy who misses a month and a half or whatever he missed. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm starting to sound a bit like a lightnings fan, but uh, I'm going with Vasilevsky here. Uh, I think there's so many teams that are turning to, you know, goalie tandems, which obviously is great when it comes to winning and having that, safety valve and net uh but i feel like this award you're going to need the volume and the numbers and just sort of carrying the crease to have a better shot not to say that someone in a tandem can't win but i think with what tampa has even though that you know i keep on echoing they've lost kucherov uh, i think uh vasilevsky's already proven himself as the top net minder just consensus one of the top three in the entire league and i think that's going to continue this year and he's going to put together the numbers and the volume to take away the award I'm taking a flyer here, folks. I'm going to go with Jacob Markstrom of the Calgary Flames. It's crazy, I know. But uh, I think this guy, you know, they've shown that they have the faith in him with a six-year contract signed in October. He's put up good numbers throughout his career. Uh, Kind of fell out a little bit with the Canucks down that stretch when Patrick Demko heated up, uh, right? Is that all correct? Just making sure. Just making sure I know my stuff. Um, so maybe, you know, this year when he's signed another team, he's going to get to see the Canucks plenty. Maybe he tries to stick it to him. Not sure if that matters to him, uh, but he's also going to be playing against some of the best teams there in that gauntlet of a North division. So if he rises to the occasion there, uh, I think it's going to be pretty easy to call him one of the best goal tenders in the league, but that's a lot that has to go right. So who knows? Uh, all right. Last thing, uh, on the, uh, the individual award front would be your, uh, your Calder trophy. So rookie of the year, best young player for you guys. Uh, I'm going Kirill Kaprizov or Kaprizov, however you say his last name. Um, you know, kind of that Art, Artemi Panarin level of excitement coming over from Russia here as a little bit of an older prospect and a trade that gets swept under the radar because the Bruins swapped fifth round picks with the Wild. And it's like a nothing trade on draft night. And all of a sudden, Kirill Kaprizov's the hottest thing since sliced bread coming over from Europe. Um, but I think this kid's sick. He's the total package. He's got an unbelievable shot, unbelievable hands. He can skate like the wind. And for a Minnesota team that doesn't have a ton going offensively outside of, I guess, Kevin Fiala, um, I think he's going to really, you know, step in in his first year and make make an impact. I got to be honest. I did not pay that much attention to the draft, honestly, for this year because it was going on like pretty much when the playoffs were cooking up. And I didn't hear a whole lot like the last couple of years with Eichel or with like Hughes, where so I didn't really hear a lot of the names, honestly. So I'm going to go with kind of a homer pick. And honestly, that has good odds if you're better out there. 1,600 odds, Trevor Zegers. Let it up during the tournament. And if he plays at all, like he's got a good shot of getting in the spot at Anaheim, you know, I think they'll be able to put up some good numbers in that division. The goalies aren't quite as good probably as they are through other conferences. So I like Trevor Zegers with 1,600 odds, guys. You're a game boy. Yeah, I uh, – this one I'm a little bit uh... – pulling both uh, back and forth with, uh, but I'm ultimately going to go with uh, Alexi Lafreniere. I still don't know if that's the correct way to pronounce his name. Just the Canadian French it kills me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it, my only pullback is 
you know, he's going to be on a team that has a lot of talented playmakers uh, in the forward group. And so will he be helped out by that support or will that sort of bury him in terms of point production when you look at Panarin and uh, Zibanejad and everybody else they've got there? So that's a little bit tricky. Plus, uh, Shestjorkin has his own uh, his own case for the Calder at least coming in. So that might, you know, they're both on the same team. That could take away from his shot as well. But uh, I, I'm going to opt in the camp that the forward group he's with uh, is going to help him. I think that's going to help uh, take some pressure off him and allow him to perform on the third line uh, for the Rangers. And I think he's going to really step in and make a difference right away. Yeah. I'm also going to go on the LA Kings, another center, but not Trevor Zegers. I'm going to go Quinton Byfield, number two pick. And, uh, and I think a guy who's in line for a good year here, especially because he's on a team that's not going to have the highest of expectations, right? I feel like we sometimes, you know, we look at maybe a Jack Hughes going to the Devils and we're like, oh, the Devils are going to be so good this year. Maybe they could push for a wild card spot. Or, you know, Lafreniere, like a rising Rangers team here. Can he be that extra piece that they need? I mean, we're not thinking that the Kings are getting into the playoffs anytime soon, probably. So maybe it just allows um, Byfield to have kind of quietly a good year and, uh, and we'll see what happens there. Okay. Those are the individual awards and we'll finish off the show here, fellas, with our Stanley cup picks. We already know what you think of the teams, so I don't need too much explanation, but just who do you have to come out of the, um, well, is it the East and the West actually this year? What, how's that working? Yeah, there's still the two conferences. It's the East and the central and okay. then the North and the West. All righty. Unless well, it's the North and the, no, it has to be. The I, it's the North and the West, but right. like, obviously there are teams like Toronto would be a Western conference team this year when normally wow. they're, they're so get, like, Bruins, oh, that's one. Yeah. Bruins. Uh, Bruins, 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 yeah, Bruins. Bruins. <laughs> Maple Leafs could be in the final. <laughs> kind of going back when it was the old like Adams division and stuff. Yeah. Right? Throw it back to like 1942 when there were just six teams, you know, that yeah. might change our picks a little bit, but uh, I'll throw it to you guys. Give me your, your two uh, finalists and then who's going to take it all. My two finalists, uh, I would go Philly in the East. Um, coming out of the Central, man, it's tough not it's tough to pick against Tampa, even though I already did earlier. Um, but I think I'll go, I think I'll go Philly and Philly and Dallas. I, I don't even love that pick with Dallas. I guess Philly and I'll talk myself into Tampa. Philly and Tampa, I think Tampa will kind of take over Carolina in the playoffs if they meet. Um, so that'll be the Eastern Conference. And then the West, it's Colorado. And, oh, man, it's like the path is kind of there for Toronto to come out of the first two rounds, just the way the division is. But you know they're going to fold at some point. So I'll go Colorado and Calgary. Um, and Colorado's winning this thing. It is, it's theirs to lose, I think. Wait a minute. You gave four teams. What did you say the Stanley Cup final was? I thought you were saying uh, – sorry, I thought you said final four. Colorado and Calgary. Okay, thank you. Yes, Colorado and Calgary. No, that can't work. Colorado and uh, Philly. Colorado, Philly, Colorado. <laughs> Philly to the final. All righty. Correct. You I'm talking to myself Patrick. into a pretzel right seamless. now just because it's so weird this year. That's going to be so easy to go back and find, Patrick, when when, when, it, when that's correct and we want to find the clip. That, that was seamless right there. We can just put it right in. Thank you. Yeah, Colorado <laughs> over Philly. There you go. All right, I'll go Philly over Colorado. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I am going to go Ve- Vegas <laughs> over Philadelphia, the Flyers. Wow. We all Vegas have the Knights. Flyers. We're all the Flyers making yeah. the finals. That doesn't mean the Flyers are going to miss the playoffs. Yeah, they're getting they're it seriously. Yeah. They're gonna, they're I would like be fine guys. with that. I would be they're fine gonna with have, that. Like, they're going to have like three guys like tearing ACL and just be like, be like fifth in the division. Like Buffalo is going to be higher than them now. Yeah, you you people are crazy with how high you are on the Flyers. They haven't even really the done Flyers. it. the Flyers. I think you, you have to go in the Central. I would go – with the stars to get back there. I'm high on the stars, I guess. Um, and I think oh, it's hard to go against uh, Colorado, isn't it? Right? Remember Brady picked the Stanley Cup final and the winner last year. I did. I actually had the lightning to beat the stars. So I think the stars are going back. I don't want to say avalanche. No, I do. I think it'll be avalanche and stars. And I do think, uh, you know, last year it worked out to pick the favorite. So I'll just do it again. I'll go with the Avalanche to beat the Stars. And we'll see where it goes from there. So the four of us have like six teams total with our picks. <laughs> We're very original. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that does it, fellas. I think that does it. Yeah. That was phenomenal. Well, hopefully the are people... We, are we going to want, want to be doing this like kind of frequently, guys? Like once every like couple weeks or whatever? Like is this the new NHL podcast? I mean, like... Sure. See where it takes Joe and I have great chemistry. 
Joe from the BU hockey blog. I mean, like that was just phenomenal yesterday. Well, so, I, mean, yeah, I was thinking yeah, earlier because I listened to your your show for the Terrier Hockey Talk over at a uh, yeah, yeah. press, and then Patrick and I also have our um, BU hockey show. Like this is the cohort yeah, why, we, of BU hockey podcasting. Like this is it. Combining right? forces. Yeah, that's right. It's great. The finest podcasting content to come out of Boston University hockey. And they're all right here on the same screen. You people are just, it's a treat to watch, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. We'll call it there. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this and you can find everyone on Twitter at PatDon12 at, oh God, what is it, Joe? Oh, uh, Joe underscore Poho. Just Joe. Come on, I knew that. At shut up, Chad Jones. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yep. <laughs> Brady D. Gardner. Yep, that is. Uh, but of course, find all the content there. Find everything from WTBU at WTBU Sports and online at sites.bu.edu slash WTBU slash sports. Look at Got that. That was, mood. that was nice. Uh, and hopefully everybody enjoyed this. Enjoy the NHL season. It's going to be a good one. And we will talk to you all later.